Oh, God loves you. No, he don't love me because if he loved me, he wouldn't have let this happen to me. If he loved me, he wouldn't have never let my mom and my dad die. If he loved me, he would have never let me lose my job. And so that enemy will make you want to defend that lie when people is trying to tell you the truth. And so that false kingdom is trying to stand before, before the truth because it don't want you to recognize the truth. And see, we got to understand, you may have a lot of kingdoms going on and you don't know it. A kingdom can be depression. A kingdom can be uh, uh, um, bitterness, anger, gossiping, backbiting, insecurity, low self-esteem, self-hatred. It, it, it can be being in your feelings, uh, being all in your emotions, and it makes you feel like you got to defend what nobody don't love me, dealing with self, uh, low self-esteem, insecurities. These are mindsets on the inside of a person that makes them feel like nobody will never love me, nobody will never marry me because I'm too old. And see, it speaks louder than God's voice. That's why it's called a kingdom. You got to understand there's two kingdoms on this earth. You got the kingdom of God and the kingdom of darkness. God is the kingdom of light. Satan is the kingdom of darkness. You, when you recognize Satan kingdom, Satan kingdom is what you see with your natural eyes. But the kingdom of God is ran through words. In other words, you can turn on your news. You're going to find fear. They're talking about death. They're talking about separation. They're talking about all kind of negative things. So when you begin to see it, what do it make you do? It makes you get afraid. It makes you feel hopeless. It makes you feel bad. But then when you go to church, when you go to a Bible-based church, you begin to hear the preaching and the teaching, and you begin to hear the worship, and they begin to say, God is here. They begin to say, open up your mouth, praise God. And you begin to say, you know, tell the devil you don't have no victory. And once you start speaking the word of God, then you begin to feel lighter. Things begin to break off of you. Then things that begin to look clear to you. See, that's how the kingdom of God is ran. And so God said that you got to begin to take apart these kingdoms that we've been talking about how we learned a lot of these false kingdoms by our upbringing. So if mama had low self-esteem and we never saw mama take care of herself, we will pick up that same mindset. So if mama dealt with abusive relationships, mama taught us how to handle abuse. Mama taught us how to be in relationships where people would talk against us, where people say, oh, you ain't no good. Nobody never wants you. I'm the only one that wants you. And so now you would go and look for other relationships that would do the same thing to you because that's what you saw mama do. So if you begin to go on a job and you begin to see dad begin to steal, and so guess what? So when you begin to see something that you want, you're going to steal because that kingdom taught you how to steal. You got to understand you're being taught. Even a little baby is being taught. A baby in a mother's womb is being taught because they can begin to, they can begin to, uh, the spirit begin to transfer from the mama to the baby. Why you think little bitty newborn baby, you ever wonder when they hear people talking, they start looking around? Because they listening to the voices. And you got to understand the Bible say in John 1, in the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. So the Bible is a book of laws. So you got to understand. So the Bible begin to tell us how to live in this kingdom of God. So in John 1, it's telling us that the spirit of God is words. So when you begin to read God's word, when you begin to speak God's word, you are speaking God into your situation. You are speaking God into your marriage. You are speaking God into your your job. You're speaking God into your relationship. So God is saying, I just need you to open up your mouth and speak my word. I just need you to get in my book and start speaking my word. He said, because when you speak my word, you are activating me to come in. Can I tell you, it may look like he ain't came in, but he don't came in. That's why you can pray and you can say, now I don't pray. I feel better. You know why you feel better? Because when you open up your mouth and you begin to start speaking the word of God, angels begin to come in the room. See, the Bible begin to tell me in Daniel 10 that when when you begin to pray, angels begin to respond to your words. So guess what? So when you begin to start praying, praising God, when you start speaking God's word, guess what? Angels are activated to come in your situation. But on the flip side, when you start talking negative, I can't do this. This too much. This too hard. I feel like I'm about to lose my mind. I feel like I'm about to have a nervous breakdown. Guess what? You are activating demons to come into your house. This is why I don't want to go home. This is why I can't go to sleep. I feel like I'm sick. I feel like I can't make it. Because them demons, it's their job to do a job for Satan. A lot of times we got to understand 
How you feeling right now? You may say, I don't feel good. I feel sick. And you got to understand, a demon needs a body in order for it to display itself. See, a lot of times people come in church and the church have taught us how to have a good time. But the church have not taught us the laws of the kingdom. And you got to understand that a demonic spirit just can't operate by itself. It needs a human being so it can manifest. What are you saying, Apostle? So if I begin to punch a hole in this wall, you may say, what's wrong with her? She's angry. Guess what? That's a spirit of anger. So if I wake up in the morning and say, I feel like I'm sick. That's telling you that a spirit of sickness don't came in my body. And a lot of times, I feel hopeless. I don't feel like I'm going to make it. You thought that was you and you don't recognize that that's a spirit on the inside of you because it wants to live in your body. And so a lot of times, you think and see the devil want us to, the Bible say my people perish because they lack knowledge. A lot of times people don't understand just because you don't know the laws of the kingdom, you thinking it's you when it's really not you. It's the demonic spirits in you that's making you feel the way that you feel. And see, and we have not recognized that the reason God can't bless us because of the way that we think and the way that we speak. So if I say, God, I'm so tired, I'm frustrated, I feel like I'm about to lose my mind, guess what? God can't do anything because I just put out in the atmosphere negativity. The only way he can come and help me is when I begin to get in the word and when I begin to get into a place of prayer and I begin to repent and say, Lord, forgive me for every negative word I thought in my mind. Every negative word that I spoke over my marriage, I spoke over my children, I spoke over my job, I spoke over my body. Lord, forgive me. I ask you to cleanse these areas with the blood of Jesus because I need you to cleanse my house because I need the blessings of the Lord to come upon me. And guess what that does? So when I begin to speak the word of God, not over my situation. This is what the devil does. The devil now begin to cause other people with other kingdoms. You got to look at where other kingdoms. Either Elder Martin is a kingdom and I'm a kingdom. So I just got up and I prayed and said, God, I need you to bless me because I'm going through something financially. So now this is another kingdom, Elder Martin. So she began to come and say, come on, uh, Apostle, let's go play this lottery because, girl, I got a good number 227 and 155 and all this other kind of stuff. And so when she began to, and so when she come to me and I began to say, okay, what I have just now did was I have agreed with the enemy. So what God wanted to do with me in prayer, he can't do it now because I just now agreed with something that Elder Martin was telling me to do that wasn't of God. Does it mean she's a bad person? No. But what it means is that now I have hindered God from blessing me because I have came into agreement with a way that God didn't say this is the way he's going to do. This is the way that she brought to me to do it. And so since I'm saying, oh, it's okay, in the world it may be okay, but in the kingdom of God it's not okay. Amen. That's the difference. A lot of times we try to make things okay because it's okay in the world, but it's not okay to the kingdom of God. And see, a lot of times people have failed, them, they, they, they have uh, missed the mark because they try to bring the world thinking into the church. You can't miss the two. Just like you can't mix McDonald's and Burger King together. They're two entirely different entities. That's the same thing. I can't and bring my thinking in the world into the kingdom of God and thinking all is going to be fine. See, God is trying to show us that our upbringing and what we learned on TV, what we learned from our friends, what we learned on our own, we learned how to be messed up. We learned how to be dysfunctional. We learned how to be in the world, but we don't know how to function as being children of God. Amen. So if you're going to be a child of God, I got to get in this word and I got to begin to learn what it is that I'm doing that's wrong so I can get in right standing so he can bless me. Here it is. God is going to bless you regardless. The Bible says he reigned on the just as well as the unjust. But guess what? But God got some promises for those who are his children. That you will stand out like a sore thumb, but you got to understand these blessings don't just come to you. It's where you got to be willing to change the way that you think. You got to be able to change the way that you talk if you're going to walk in these blessings. And so now I'm going to bring you up to speed today. Today we're going to talk about speaking to the storm. Speaking to the storm. What is a storm? A storm is a violent disturbance of the atmosphere with strong winds. 
A storm may represent your trial, your tribulation, sickness, death. It may represent a family member, a loved one, depression, unforgiveness, rejection, hurt, pain, disappointment. A, a storm represents something that comes into your life that want to stop you from getting what God got for you. The moment you got to understand that you are here on earth because God got a purpose for your life. You may have thought that your job is just for you to work on your job, your family, your children, and you're going to be here and die and move on. But no, as a believer, God got us here on earth for a reason. Just like how you got a job on your, uh, you got you, you got an assignment for your job, God got an assignment for you to do. And you got to understand it's the job of the devil is to throw storms in your life to make you forfeit your assignment. See, the devil don't care about you working your nine to five. The devil care when you start walking in your God-ordained assignment. You got to understand the devil will use anybody, your mama, your daddy, your brother, your sister, your husband, your wife, your co-worker, your church member, your pastor, your leader. The devil will use anybody who allow him to be a storm in your life to keep you from crossing over. I want you to turn your Bibles to Luke, the eighth chapter, because I'm going to begin to show you that even that when a what happens when a storm comes you got to understand that you so bad and you so anointed that you when you got the spirit of God on the inside of you that everything that you seen Jesus do you got that same ability on the inside of you but you got to be willing to, to, to believe it to manifest it and to cultivate it say cultivate it you got to understand that the Bible is a book of mystery God got it designed that even the devil can read the Bible and he won't see what it is God is saying but those who are God's children, God want people who will look like him, talk like him, act like him. That when you begin to read the word of God, you begin to find secrets. And these secrets are called mysteries. And so there's mysteries that are hidden in the word of God. You got to understand the word of God has says that you are king and you are priest. See, the word The world may tell you that you're nobody, but when you are a child of God, God has called you to be a king, and God has called you to be a priest. You gotta understand that you are children of the king. And I don't know about you in the natural, when you see children of the king, they walk in royalty, they walk in authority, they walk in power. I've never seen a bunch of children in the church that say that they're children of God, but we have no power, we have no authority, and we walk around like we're mere people. Us. You know the reason why? Because a lot of times we have not been taught to walk as a king, how to walk as a priest. But God said, I'm raising up a prophetic people. He said, I'm raising up a young generation that won't sit back and let you tell me that I'm a prostitute. I won't let you sit back and say, well, yeah, I might used to be a drunk, but I don't want to be a drunk no more. Yeah, I used to be a whore, but I'm not a whore no more. Yeah, I used to be a drug dealer, but I'm not a drug dealer no more. Yeah, I used to be a prostitute, but I'm not a prostitute no more. See, God don't care about what you did, but God want to change your name. He want to change your relationship. The Bible talk about when God changed your name, he changes your thought process. He changes the way that you see things. He changes the way that you speak things. And then God said that when you begin to walk, when you begin to walk as a child of God, you begin to see things to change. The Bible begin to say that even when you're in the kingdom of God, Proverbs 18 and 21, write that down. He said, death and life lies in the power of your tongue. What does that mean? If you're going to be a child of God, if you want to get God to come on, your, on the scene, he said, God is watching your words. The book of Malachi 3 said, there's an angel that's recording everything that you say, everything that you do. So you got to understand. I may not hear what you're saying, but God does. Even if you're just putting it in your mind, God is knowing what you're saying. And see, and this is why we got to be more careful with the words that we speak out of our mouth. The Bible began to say in Genesis 2 and 7, I need you to write this down. The Bible said that when even before God made Adam, the Bible said God began to take some dirt of the earth, and he, be, he began to blow in it, and it, but I would say man became a living soul. You got to understand you're made of three parts. You're made of a soul, a spirit, and a body. So when you look at the mirror, you're not looking at the real you. You're just looking at the house you stay in. Yeah. We all got different houses. I told you we're all in different kingdoms. Amen. The real you is invisible. The real you is a spirit. 
The real you, your soul is what you like, how you was raised, what you like, what you dislike. The spirit man that's on the inside of you, that's the place where God lives. That's why when you begin to open up your mouth and you begin to speak your word, he begin to do something in this body. And this is why you feel different because his spirit is being activated. That's all you got to understand. So in Genesis 2 and 7, the Bible said when he blew into the dirt, the Bible say man became a living soul. So what is God showing us that when he blew into Adam, Adam became a living soul. That breath that Adam, that he breathed into Adam, it's called the Ruach. Open up your mouth and begin to blow. When you begin to blow, you so powerful. You got the ability to bring di death. You got the ability to bring life. And so a lot of times you may say, well, I said something and nothing didn't happen. See, it just didn't happen in the natural. But the moment you said it in the spirit, it already happened. So in other words, you say, I'm healed. Well, the doctor report says I'm still the same. My healing just had not caught up. But I have already released it in the atmosphere. And God said, I'm trying to teach your people that you know how to hold the teaching. You know how to hold the word. You know how to become the word. Do you not know that you are living because of the word? And see, the Bible said that when you begin to open up your mouth and you begin to speak, you're bringing life into your reality. You're bringing the kingdom into your reality. See, I'm trying to create a foundation so you can understand what I show you, what I'm going to show you in Luke 8. Let's look at Luke 8 and let's look at verse 22. When you look at verse 22, it says, Now it came to pass on a certain day, talking about Jesus, that he went into a ship with his disciples. How many know that even if you're going if you're gonna follow Jesus, you got to be a disciple. You got too many people that they want to lead and they don't even know who Jesus is yet. We gotta begin to follow those who know how to follow Jesus. You gotta understand you can't lead if you have not followed. That's right. Amen. Amen. It said they was in the ship with his disciples, and he said unto them, Let us go over to the other side. Say I'm going to the other side. Come on, you got to understand, Jesus was telling them to go to the other side. Because as you read the scripture, on the other side, Jesus was going over to help Legion. Legion was a man with over 6,000 demons yeah. in one person. Yeah. That's good. So, see, in other words, y'all ever wonder how you be able to be at home and feel like somebody watching you? Uh -huh. You by yourself? See, those are spirits. They watching you to see what you do, what time you pray, what time you eat. They hear your conversation. I can't do this. This too hard. And when you start speaking negative out your mouth, they are they're monitoring spirits. They listen to what you say, and they go back and tell the devil. And they say, well, this is how we got to get them, because they're afraid of dark. They're afraid of being by themselves. They're afraid of that new position. So stuff that you voice to other people, because you got to remember, they're another kingdom too. So when you talk to your friend, and you know your friend ain't saying, your friend's struggling, and you telling her, I can't do this, girl, blah, blah, blah. You already telling the devil how to get you. Yeah, it may be your friend, but your friend is being possessed by other demons that's controlling them. So the demons knew that Jesus was going to the other side, because he told them. So when he's spoken in the atmosphere, you think your situation don't have no ears? You think your problem don't have no ears? You think your bank account don't have no ears? You think your household, your room don't have no ears? Listen to what it says here. He said, let us go to the other side of the lake. And they lunch forth. But as they sail, he fell asleep. Talking about Jesus. And there came down a storm, underlying storm, because he's talking about speaking to your storm. There came down a storm of wind on the lake. And they were filled with water and they were in jeopardy. How many times they, in your life you may, Lord, why am I going through financially? They cut back my hours. They sit up there trying to, they try to take my house. They try to take my car. My husband acting funny. My wife acting funny. My children acting dysfunction. My body acting crazy. Lord, I don't know what's going on in this world. They talking about this virus. People are dying. Lord, I'm, I'm afraid. They talking about they expecting so many people to die. They talking about this vaccine. Lord, I can't sleep at night. I'm hearing sounds. I'm being gunshots turn around. People are being murdered. But we with the police and the, the racism and the prejudice. Women are being uh, sex trafficking. Lord, there's a lot of storms going on in this world and I don't know what to do. Even when I don't know if I want my child to go to school because with this virus. I don't know all this 
stuff. They tell me they're going to cut the, the food. Something's going on with the food. Something's going on with the water. You can't trust this president. You can't trust this people. The people in our nation are arguing. There's so much confusion. There are so many storms in my life that I don't know what to do. And since this is what they were telling Jesus, this water has filled up our boat, and we don't know what to do. Verse 24 say, and they came to him, and they woke him up. Saying, Master, Master, we perish. Then he rose up and he rebuked the wind and the raging of the water. And they ceased and there was a calm. Listen to what I said. It said they woke him up. Listen to what he said. They woke him up. He rose up. He rebuked the wind. When is the last time you rebuke whatever that you're dealing with in your household? Somebody want to argue with you. Somebody want to fuss with you. Somebody on the job. Devil, I rebuke you. So you see your supervisor messing with you. You look her in your eye, but in your mind, I rebuke this spirit in the name of Jesus. You looking at your children acting a fool, and you say, I rebuke this spirit in the name of Jesus. God said, when is the last time you spoke to the storm? When is the last time you spoke to your body? And say, I rebuke this pain. I rebuke this frustration. I rebuke this fear. I rebuke this stuff that I'm dealing with. I'm re I rebuke these to money cycles. I keep going around the same thing over and over again. God said that you got to rebuke the wind. And it's a, and the raging of the water. And it say, and they ceased. And there was calm. See, Jesus is trying to show us if you're going to be my kingdom. I'm going to allow situations to come to you. I'm going to allow trials to come to you. But I'm going to see what you're going to do. See, a lot of times, we go looking for somebody else, and Jesus said, who calling me? Amen. See, he lives on the inside of you. He said, hey, you're supposed to be representing me. See, we are the body of Christ, and Jesus is our head. He's the God, is the king, and we're his kingdom. Amen. Amen. And God said, if you're going to be my kingdom, you got to begin to listen to the head. And listen to what he says here. He said, verse 25, and he said it to them, where is your faith? Yeah. See, what is faith? It's when you begin to look beyond what you see. Faith is that you begin to see yourself that everything going to be all right when it looks like it ain't all right, age. Faith is when you begin to speak to your body and say, you know what, God has healed me because his word said he healed me. Even though I may be feeling pain in my body, but God said he already healed me. Amen. Even though it may look crazy on the news, it may look crazy all over the world, but God said it's going to be all right. Because I'm a child of God and he got me. It's what I got to begin to speak what I don't see. Yes, yes, Lord. Let's go. He asked them, where is your faith? And when they being afraid, they wondered, saying one to another, what manner of man is this? For he commanded even the winds and the water, and they obeyed him. I want you to write these things down here. Storms come to stagnate you. They come to prevent you from crossing over to the other side. Storms have come in your life where they have been orchestrated by Satan to stop you from seeing things being changed. You may be looking at your child and say, Lord, when am my child going to be delivered? Yes. See, that storm have came to trouble you because it don't want you to see your child delivered. It wants you to see what you see now. The storm have come to want you to see that your marriage is jacked up because the devil wants you to agree with what it looked like right now. Amen, amen. But see, God is saying, I'm raising up a people that in your mind you got to see yourself beyond the storm. Yes, it's where you got to speak to the storm. Yes. You got to understand the storm was designed to make you forfeit your job. Come on now, the storm was designed to make you lose your job that God had gave you on earth. The storm, it demands a response from you. You ever seen when you're going through on the job and people talking crazy? Because see, now the enemy wants you to talk crazy too. You ever seen when somebody arguing with you? They saying ugly stuff because get what they're trying to do. They want a response out of you. See, a, a storm, it represents, a, it, it, it wants a response from you. It wants you to open up your mouth because the devil understands if he gets you to speak negative, you're going to forfeit what God has did for you. 
The devil wants you to think God don't care. See, God said, you got to know that when I promise you something, I'm going to do it. But I need you to hold your tongue when the storm is raging. I need you to hold your tongue and begin to talk to me and don't even pay the storm no attention. See, a lot of times we've been paying these storms to attention. We following folks, so they arguing. We follow them up and back and forth because you're going to hear me. You're going to listen to what I'm saying. You're going to see my point of view. You ain't going to make no fool out of me. And we going back and forth. And God said, here it is. You're going to be speaking to the storm. But you up here fighting with the storm. You get the storm a response. When God said, I told you to speak to the storm. And you keep on speaking to me. You ignore the storm. But you speak to it. Because a lot of times we've been giving too much attention to the storm that you forgot that you are, you forgot that you're the kingdom of God. That the kingdom lives within you. You ain't even listen to the king because you listen to another king. You listen to this king who been hired by the storm. Because see here, God is allowed. You may say, why is God allowing this storm? Because God want to show you that you need him to fight the storm. A lot of times we've been losing because we've been looking at the storm and not looking at God. God is trying to show us that we are his children. And he said, I need you to understand that you got power. But it's something that I want to show you in this story. That even after this happened. Matter of fact, let's, let's, let's go there. I want to show you. This is what happened. When Jesus rebuked the storm and the storm obeyed him. Verse 26 says, and they arrived in the country of the Galileans, which is over against Galilee. And when he went forth to the land, there met him out of the city a certain man which had devils long time. And he wore no clothes, neither he abode in any house, but he was in the tomb. In other words, this man was full of demons. But what I'm trying to show you is the storm came because the demons did not want this man to be delivered. What am I showing you? Whenever you see a storm come in your life, God is trying to bless you with something. But the devil is sending the storm. God is the devil. The storm is coming to you because the storm is trying to abort. The storm is trying to stop you from crossing over. The moment that you have opposition come in your life, that's an indication to you that it's a blessing on the other side. I need y'all to get this. The moment the argument, the fussing, the confrontation, the warfare, the moment it comes to you, it's coming because God has released a blessing to you. Guess what? Even things in the world will come to attack you because of the blessing. In other words, this ain't no little bitty blessing God trying to get to you. These are big blessings God is trying to release to you. That's why... Think about it. If Jesus was crossing over to the other side, you mean the water in the ocean started raging trying to drown them because it didn't want them to go outside? I'm trying to tell you the devil would even cause an argument because he don't want you to get to the blessing. The devil would cause it to rain. You know you're going to get ready to go somewhere. He would cause it to rain so hard that you can't even see. He would even call you to oversleep so that you can miss your interview because he's trying to stop you from crossing over to the other side. Right. See, you got to understand that Satan, Ephesians 2, write this down. Satan is the prince of the air. In other words, Satan got ruled to operate on the earth. So he can use anything in the earth to stop you. You can be filling out an application. Your computer will shut down because they don't want you to cross over to the other side. You got ready to go somewhere, then the people at your apartment complex want to mess with the water. You can't even take a bath. You may wake up in your bathroom. I woke up one morning to go to work. My bathroom had flooded because the enemy wanted to try to stop me from going forward. See, you got to understand, this is why we got to speak to the storm because hell is launching attacks against you. This ain't no little mosquito attack. This is what he will call situation to happen to get you to forfeit the promise. He will call some people to come in your life to get you distracted and you don't even think about your job that you got for God no more. You got to begin to take this serious when we're talking about dismantling these kingdoms. 
Because you got people frustrated talking about, I just feel such a heaviness when I go home. It's because the kingdom of the kingdom of God has have came in to lunch where well, you won't have no peace in the house. Amen. Amen. You can't rest at night. Amen. And see, and this is what the demon was doing. The demon tried to cause the boat to drown so that they could help this man full of demons. And what am I telling you? You so important to God that different things will happen outside here in the world to stop you. Amen. I need y'all to get that now because the devil been telling you that you ain't important. That's right. The devil been telling you you ain't got no power. But why all of a sudden you get ready to go somewhere and the moment you start trying to read your Bible, you're going to sleep. You know why? Because he don't want you to get it. Because he understands if you understand the laws of the kingdom, your life is going to change. It's where you got to have a press on the inside of you that you're pressing against all opposition. You pressing up against how you feel. You pressing up against your emotion, imagination in your mind. You got to begin to push to know what it is that God has called you to do. And you got to begin to talk to yourself and say, I can do this. I will not lose my mind. I will not have a breakdown. I'm going to get this house. I'm going to get this car. I'm going to get this job. I will not be moved. You will not talk me out of the promise because I'm going to speak to this storm. Storm, you got to go. Storm, you got to bow. Storm, you can't stop me. You will not frustrate me. You got to open up your mouth and you got to tell the devil you are a liar. I'm going to show you that you are a kingdom. Turn your Bibles to Luke 17. When you look at Luke 17, let's look at verse 20 because I want you to see. Well, Apostle say I'm a king. I'm going to show you what God said, who you are. When you look at Luke 17, let's look at verse 20. He said, and when he was demanded of the Pharisees, because we're talking to these church folk. Or oh, you ain't that, you just a usher. Or oh, you ain't that, you just a you just a cook. Or oh, you just a little minister. Or oh, you ain't nobody. Or oh, don't nobody ain't nobody studying about you. See, don't let folk with title make you think you ain't nothing because you ain't got no title. The simple fact you got a title as a believer, you gotta know that you are a child of a king. Yes, Lord. And see that what the Pharisees were trying to tell them. When is the kingdom of God should come? He answered them and said. The kingdom of God come not with observation. In other words, see these church folk, which I, cause you keep saying the kingdom, the kingdom, the kingdom. Well, what you mean the kingdom? He said, I'm trying to tell you the kingdom ain't with me building no big church. The kingdom ain't with me with a thousand people. He said, the kingdom, I'm going to show you what the kingdom. He said, you can't see the kingdom with your natural eyes. Well, you say, I'm going to walk to the kingdom. Or I'm going to go to the kingdom. He said, you ain't going to be able to see the kingdom like that. That's right. Come on, Pastor. Look at verse 21. He said, neither shall they say, lo, here or there. For behold, the kingdom of God is what? Within you. So he said, the kingdom of God is within you. So in other words, when people try to tell you you ain't good enough, God said, I told you you're good enough. When they try to tell you you don't qualify, God said, I told you you qualify. And you keep going until you get it. The more they turn you down, God said, you keep going back. The more they say you can't get it, you go back. I'm giving you power in your mind. I'm giving you power in your body that you will not. You're going to be like the energizer buddy. I'm going to keep going. If this ain't the one, I'm going to go to another one. If this ain't the one, I'm going to go to another one. If this ain't the one, I'm going to go to another one. Well, you don't move because people tell you no. You don't move because they turn you down. You don't move because people ain't helping you. You keep going because that's what the kingdom of God is. Can't nothing break the kingdom of God. You let these folk break you. Oh, uh, because I don't have no title. I feel like I ain't nothing. The devil is a lie. You can't break me because no title. No title don't make me. It's the power of God that makes me who I am. God says, speak to these storms. Speak to the, A storm can be a person that's telling you that you can't. A storm is a person that's telling you that you're stupid. A storm is a person that's always trying to keep you in a past. A storm is a person that's always trying to keep you in a low place. See, they are storms. And you got to say, Lord, move these stones out of my life. Move these stones out of my way. You got to tell the Lord because, see, you give him permission when you speak it. Yes. Jesus, Jesus. 
Turn to turn right on over now to Luke the ninth chapter. Okay, my Luke 18. Let's look at Luke 9. So when you look at Luke 9, let's look at verse 1. You mean to tell me that God said that you're a kingdom? Okay, so if you are his kingdom, and if his kingdom lives within you, he said, if I live in your mind, I'm going to show you how to be my kingdom. And then when people see you, they're going to see me. So when you look at Luke 9, let's look at verse 1. Then he said unto his disciples, he called his 12 disciples together, and he gave them what? Power. Power. Did he say he gave special people? Uh -uh. A follower is a person who read the Bible Amen. and begin to do and believe what God said that they can do, right? Amen. So he said, if you believe my word, if you read my word, if you believe my word, you can do these things. That's the formula. Amen. You got to read it. Uh -huh. You got to believe it. And you can do it. Amen. It ain't just saying it. No, you got to rehearse it over and over in your mind. Until you got the confidence that you can do it. He said here, he said he gave them power and authority. Let me give you the definition for authority. Authority is a mental power. It's a mental ability in your thinking to influence other people. It's a mental ability when you put God's word on the inside of your mind. And you start speaking the word and things start changing in your life. You're drawing people to listen to you. You're drawing situations to help you. You're drawing prayers. You're drawing strength. Whatever that you've been speaking. So when you put this word in your mind, it gives you a mental strength that what you speak, now your mind begins to manifest. It. That's the mystery part of it. You may say, how is it a mystery? Do you not know the God that you say you serve? You saying that I believe the story about this man that was here on earth over 2,000 years ago. Do you not know his mother was never touched by a man? Amen. And she was overshadowed by a spirit in her mind. And she, in other words, the angel told her, you're going to have a baby. And the baby began to come in her womb. Amen. Nobody touched her. And said the man, and said he told Joseph, you cannot touch her until she has this baby. Think about it. She was 16 years old. She asked the angel, how could this happen when I've never been touched by a man? Yes, yes, she did. Yes, she did. The Bible said, they said that you have found favor with God. With God. Come on, and she said, be it unto me. So God said, I want to use you to do a job for me. He waited on you to say, Angie, be it unto me. So when you say be it unto me, he going to give you a supernatural courage in your mind that you going to be able to believe you can do stuff that you normally could not do. Come on now. See, when you're a child of God, it may be like a thousand people against you and you just right here by yourself. Yeah, yeah. He wants you to say, well, be it unto me. Because my God going to supply me. My God going to protect me. My God going to fight for me. He said he'll contend against those who contend against me. He said he'll fight against those who fight up against me. So therefore, I can't be moved because of all these numbers. I just know that I dwell in the secret place. So if I dwell in him, he going to make my enemies. They had to be my footstool. So you got to understand, what am I doing? I keep speaking his word. The more word I speak, the more angels are coming to fight for me. See, he's trying to show us that you got to speak to these storms. So Jesus said, I gave you a mental ability and I gave you power. Look what he said. Did he say, I gave you power to control people? No. He said, I gave you authority over all devils to cure diseases. And he sent them to preach the kingdom of God, to heal the sick. In other words, God said, I'm going to give you this power. But not only I'm just going to give you this power, but I'm going to give you this power. I want you to help other people walk in this power. So you know how we get other people? Well, I just want you to follow me. God said, I want you to get other people where well, you can teach it to other people. And they can teach it to other people. They can teach it to other people. See, what I'm teaching you, you can go back and teach it to other people. That's the kingdom. But when you got these people, oh, you think I can come to me. You tell them when they want something, they come to me. When they want power, they got to come to me. You want to be blessed, you got to come to me. You see how we listen to some stuff that is not true. 
When we supposed to teach you how to get power and you go on your job and somebody say, hey, I'm sick. And you say, can I pray for you? And then you begin to pray for them and they say, I feel better. See, you just showed the power of God, something that I showed you. Now you go and manifest to somebody else. So now they say, I want to follow her. See, we supposed to be teaching and equipping you in church so that you can go and show the power out there. That's right. That's right. Not for us to show the power in church to each other. That's right. That's right. I'm supposed to equip you so you can go and equip other people. Right. Talking about speaking to the storm. Yeah. So he said, I told you the kingdom is within. He said, I told you that you got power and authority. Now I want you to look at Ephesians 2. So when you look at Ephesians 2, Cause I want to show you this part about Satan. So when you look at Ephesians 2. The Bible talk about. When you look at Ephesians 2. Let's look at verse 2. He said worry in the time past. You walked. Habitually. You were following the course. In the fashion of this world. In other words, you were doing what the people in the world are doing. And you were under the sway and the tendency of this present age. Following the prince of the power of the air. So in other words, he's telling you people in the world who don't know God, who don't have no relationship with God. They're automatically following the devil and they don't recognize it. And he said that's how we was before we start learning about the things of God. See, you can be a good you can be a good person and still follow the devil. That's right. You can be a person that help other people and still follow the devil. That's right. That's right. See, he's trying to show you when you don't let me lead you and show you how to walk on earth, you are automatically being led by the devil. He said you were obedient to and you were under the control of the demon spirit that still constantly works in the sons of disobedience, the careless, the rebellious, the unbelieving. Who go against the purposes of God. Among these. We are well as just once lived. Once lived and conducted ourselves. In the passions of the flesh. And we govern our behavior. By our corrupt sensual nature. In other words. We lived our life based on our feelings. Because that's how the people in the world do. He said. Obeying the impulses of the flesh. And the thoughts of the mind. Our cravings dictated by our senses. In our dark images. We were then by nature children of God wrath and heirs of his indignation like the rest of mankind. But God so rich in his mercy because of in order to satisfy the great and wonderful and intense love which he loved us even when we were dead by our own shortcomings and trespasses he made us to live together in fellowship and union with Christ. He gave us the very life of Christ himself, the same new life which he quickened him. For it is by grace, his favor and mercy, which you did not deserve, that you are saved and delivered from judgment and partakers of Christ's salvation. Look at verse 6. And he raised us up together with him and made us sit down together, giving us joint seating with him in the heavenly sphere by virtue of our being in Christ Jesus the Messiah. What is he saying? He said when you begin to accept Jesus to be your personal Lord and Savior, even though you on earth, but the Bible says Jesus is sitting on the right hand side of the Father, right? He said, but if Jesus' spirit is on the inside of you, you sitting on the right hand side of the Father with Jesus. So that's why when you pray, you don't pray what you see. You pray what his word says. Because see, this is God. And we sit next to God inside of Jesus. And so when you pray here on earth, you don't pray what you see. You can tell him about what you see. God, my body is wrecking with pain. But God, but you said in your word, with your stripes, I am healed. I declare and decree that I'm the healed of the Lord. Lord, I thank you for healing my body. I thank you for taking the pain away. Thank you for taking the swelling away. I thank you for moving the spirit of infirmity out of my spirit in the name of Jesus. I thank you for healing me right now in the name of Jesus. Regardless of what the doctors say, regardless of what I feel, but I thank you right now because I know I'm right here on the side of the Father and I know that you hear my prayers. You said that the prayers of the righteous are very much, so therefore I will not be moved by what I feel because I know that I'm sitting on the right hand side with my with Jesus. So 
So therefore, I will not mar or complain, but I'm going to stand still and I'm going to see the salvation of the Lord because I know that you said that the promises of the Lord are yes and they are amen. And therefore, I will not be moved in Jesus' name. Amen. You see how we spend more time. Lord, can you do it? Lord, can you heal me? Lord, can you pay my life bill? Lord, can you heal my body? Lord, can you turn it around? Now you sitting next to Jesus talking like this. You know if we let him know, we don't know that we're sitting in our right seat. Your prayer should be prayers of earth. Your prayer should be prayers that I'm a kingdom child. Because in my house, a parent know her child cry. Right? So you got to know when you talk the word of God, you got God's attention. But when you talking all this crazy stuff, God saying, my children don't talk like that. My children know. You know what I'm saying? So that's just like when your mom said, you better get in the house at 7 o'clock. And it's 7 o'clock, they just look at you. The language automatically knows you say, okay, yeah, I got to go. Now my mama gonna come out here and embarrass me. She gonna come out here with a switch or whatever. See, you gotta know the language of the kingdom in order to get God's attention. And this is why he's saying the devil, see, he's called the prince of the air because when you speak negative, he can bring the negative faster than the blessing. So that's why you don't let nobody tell you you stupid, you dumb. When they saying that, I cancel that in the name of Jesus. Even if it's a supervisor, that's sometimes got people cussing stuff on the job. So in your mind, I'm cussing in the name of Jesus. I ain't receiving that. We don't have a bad day today. The devil's a lie. ain't gonna have no bad day. Y'all may have one, but I ain't having any. See, here where your words got to come back what's been released in the air. Because you don't see it, but these demonic spirits, they coming to go get the words that they just, that's been spoken over you. The reason why you should pray, you know how sometimes you wake up and you feel like, you feel sick or you feel like you're angry and you woke up like that. That's an indication that when you was asleep, somebody on earth was speaking something negative to you. And so the word that they say, you know what? Well, LaWanda ain't going to have no good day today. She's going to be frustrated today. So if LaWanda is not a praying person, the words that I spoke is going to come over there and make her have a bad day. And she don't know why. See, he may not show you who it is, but you know somebody speaking to because you woke up like that. Or either the devil will put something in your dreams that something bad happened. You got to know that when you dream of bad dreams, you got to say, I cancel it in the name of Jesus. I declare the decree it would not happen in this life nor the life to come. Because when you having bad dreams and you don't say nothing, because you got to remember God is a spirit. The spiritual law says what goes in the spirit. In other words, what goes in the spirit, your dreams is a, a, a precursor of what's going on in the natural. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So if you see yourself in a dream, picking up money, picking up money out the ground, picking up money out the ground, that's an indication if you don't cancel that dream, you're going to be dealing with the spirit of poverty. So in a dream, who I'm picking up all that money off the floor, all that money off the floor, and we think that's a good dream. But you got to understand, God is a spirit. God don't give you money. He give you the ways to make money. That's right, that's right. So when you were picking up money out the ground, you were picking up poverty. Yes, yes, yes. You may see yourself in a dream, tell somebody, well, my check number is 2273. And they say, sign your name right here. What you doing? And you may say, well, I don't even know who I was talking to, but why was I giving them my check? No. You giving the spirit of the thief information how to take from you. Jesus. Think about it. Why would you give somebody your check now? Right. And you don't even know who it is. So he's trying to show you, God is trying to show you a forecast what the enemy is trying to bring into your natural so you got to say, I counsel that in the name of Jesus. I declare and decree it will never manifest in this life nor the life to come. You may see a dead person who you know, grandmama, mama, daddy. That's generational demons trying to come into your life to bring whatever that the family man's struggling with, he want to bring it into your life. Suppose the family, women in the family dealt with not being married. 
And so when you see Aunt Sue, and Aunt Sue was married, and none of her children were married, so you see Aunt Sue coming in your dream, that spirit will come to you saying, I'm going to bring it to you. Then you don't get married either. Love your children. You know, you see what I'm saying? So you got to pay attention because see, God is a spirit. He He can't say, Lawanda, but he's a spirit. He going to come to you in a way that you would know. So he'll give her a dream to show her what it is that's trying to change her life. He will even show you things happening before it happening because suppose you may see an explosion happen in one of the schools, God forbid. It's because he wants you to say, I counsel that in the name of Jesus. I declare and decree it won't never happen. See, you got to speak to these storms because your words are going to activate angels to come and stop it. But when you say, well, I just don't know. I just know it was bad. Well, the enemy is going to use that and he's going to make it manifest because when you're telling your friend a dream, it just gave life to it. Because when we talk, what come out of our mouth? Air. So he's the prince of the what? Air. So when you speaking bad stuff to people, you giving them information to bring it to pass. This is why you don't keep telling them about the same thing over here. They did me wrong. 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 Look what you're doing. You rehearsing it over and over and over again. See, you see what I'm saying? Why we got to know these laws. So how many times we've been doing some of this same stuff I've been saying that I'm doing it too. And God said, how can I bless you when you're breaking my laws? We almost finished. The next thing he said, look at Ephesians 6. This is my last one in my closing. When you look at Ephesians 6, let's look at verse 1. He said, children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. So the reason why we got so much sin going on in our family, you see so much dishonor with the children. Children not being respectful to their parents. Even if your parents are not good parents, they did their job. God may use them to get you here. Some parents, a lot of times I tell people, we say, well, I, I don't have a good mother. I don't have a good father. But they can't teach you if nobody never taught them. They're just like, how can I expect you how to make a cake and nobody never taught you how to make a cake? That's right, that's right. You know, and I get mad. Your cake was nasty. Well, nobody never taught you how to make a cake. Right. So we get mad at our parents when nobody never taught them how to be parents. If you're going to be a good parent, you got to surround yourself with people who are good parents. That's right, that's right. See, you may say, well, I like being around my family, but if you know everybody in the family dysfunctional, you got to go be around some people who function. That's right. I learned how to holler and yell. It took my daughter to say, Mama, why do you keep yelling? That's why I ain't talking to you. And I said, Lord, what did I learn that from? Because I saw my mom, saw my aunt, saw everybody else doing it. And I said, well, well, why do I do it? Because I feel like you ain't listening to me. And she said, well, my mom listened to you, but you hollering. And I said, you know what, Lord? Help me not to holler. So I watched people who had a good relationship with their children. Yeah. They were talking to them. Yeah. Little Bible, two years old. Don't you do that no more. I love you. Now you go in there to your room, but don't you do that no Amen. more. Amen. Go in your room. Mama love you now. Now, I want to see you, Dad. <laughs> get out of my face. Get on about it. Y'all know what we did. Amen. But when we did that to our children, think about what you did. Right. She made me sick. She don't love me. I wish I wasn't ever part of that family. What am I speaking on myself? Curses. But what about that parent that spoke positive to their children? She disciplined them, but she said, I love you. She told them what they did, and the child went in the room. So the devil, nine times out of ten, is not going to meddle with that child because that parent just loved on them while she disciplined them. So you know what God is trying to show us, parents? If you want your child to listen to you, yeah. when you discipline them, you got to tell them you love them. That's right. That's right. You got to begin to tell them that they're smart. They tell them even if they're making straight else. You know what? But Red Chair, you smart. That's I know right. you're smarter than this. You're a straight A student. I know you can do better than this. So we got to begin to talk to them to change the way that they think. 
Guess what? We got to tell our parents, we got to tell our daughters, you pretty. And don't just tell them they pretty when they got on cl nice clothes. They pretty when they hair napping. They pretty when they, when they looking rough. Come on, y'all. We got to tell our children, our sons, you're smart, you're handsome. So that when they get out there and people try to tell them that they ain't good enough, they know they are good enough because we are equipping them at home. And when they go out there, they can handle the ridicule that the world try to tell them that they're not good enough. Amen. See, you got to speak to the storm. And you got to speak to your kingdom. Do you not know your children is your little kingdom? Amen, amen. Ricky and Alay is a product of me and they daddy. It's a product of the kingdom that we built together. That's right. So you got to understand that when I see my children doing what I taught them to do, they showing that they are product of this kingdom. Right. Now, when they doing something there, I ain't teaching them that. You going to another kingdom now. Yes, come on, Pastor. He said, children, obey your parents. He said, honor your father and your mother, which is, this is the first promise. God said, if you want to get blessed, you're supposed to honor your parents, even when they're not good parents. That's right. You ask God to heal them. Ask God to deal with them when they're not doing right. That's right. That's right. God, they mistreat me. They call me out of my name. God, they send some ugly stuff. Lord, I know mama and them probably wants to talk better, but Lord, I ask you to help some. Put somebody in daddy's life that will show them how to do better. Put somebody in mama's life that will show her how to be a better mother. That they may be well and that they may live long. So the spiritual law is you cuss out and disobey your parents. In other words, you're going to die early. That's, right. That's what the law says. Amen. Verse 4. And ye fathers, do not irritate and provoke your children to anger. In other words, parents, you can't provoke your children and get in your children's face and thinking that God going to bless you. God said, I'm going to deal with parents that provoke their children. You telling your children that they stupid, they dumb, they ain't that, they ain't gonna never be nothing. God said you are provoking them, and God said I got a, pro I, I got something. I'm gonna deal with you. I'm not gonna bless you because of what you're doing to your seed. Cause see, God is a God of family. Come on now, come on, yes he is, yes he is. Now let's look at verse ten. He says, "Finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord, in the power of the Lord, of the Lord, of, in the power of His might." Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. You got to understand that this is a supernatural fight. So every day you're supposed to put on your armor. If you're not putting on your armor, what does an armor do? An armor protects you. So if you're not putting on your armor, guess what? That's why the devil messing with you. Because what we say? He said, put on the armor of the Lord that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Now God is trying to tell us what we, we fight against. He said, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood. So in other words, your enemy is not the person who you think. That's right. He said, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places, underlying spiritual wickedness. He said, I'm letting you know you fight spiritual things in the atmosphere, mm -hmm. spiritual things that you can't see. Mm -hmm. He said, wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand in the evil day and having all to stand. Stand therefore with your loins girded with truth, having on the breastplate of righteousness. In other words, he said, in other words, you got to cover up your breastplate. You got to put on the breastplate right here. Go, it's going to protect your heart. So when people say ugly stuff to your heart, this, this garment is going to protect your heart. He said, put on your feet the, the preparation with the gospel of peace. So when you go places and people try to set up traps against you and they try to talk against you, you're going to say, oh, no, I got on the peace. I got on my feet with the gospel of peace. Um, verse 16, above all, taking the shield of faith. So when somebody says, oh, you ain't going to get that job. No, oh, I, I got on my shield. That just hit the shield of faith. So in other words, I quench down every negative word you just spoke about me. Everything you just talked, you spoke in your mind about me. I quench it right now in the name of Jesus. See, I'm showing you how to use a weapon. He said, wherefore, you should be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And take on the helmet of salvation. In other words, he said, you got to put the helmet on your head. What is salvation? Salvation is giving you information. Information is light. 
He said, in other words, I'm gonna put, I'm gonna give you information that's gonna show you darkness that's in your mind, darkness that's in your thinking. So when people try to speak darkness into your mind, put on your helmet so you can be revealed to see what it is they're trying to do. So in other words, somebody said, come on, they trying to go and steal, but they ain't tell you they trying to go steal. Come on and go ride with me. But some on the inside, no, y'all go ahead, I ain't gonna go. So cause see something on the inside, he said, no, nah, I just don't feel it, I ain't gonna go. But see if you would have went on, once you see that they went on and left. They don't got caught and they don't got busted in their jail. And you're going to get ready to go with them. Amen. See, you need on the helmet. You got to put this on every day so he can tell you. He may not tell you every detail. But if somebody say, come on, girl, let's go out to eat. If someone on the inside, you say, no, yes. I don't want to go. That's the Holy Spirit telling you don't go. Amen. Because something that they're going to do is not going to be of him. And so he's trying to spare you so you won't be part of it. See, God want to operate in your life to show you who he is. So he's trying to show you that your fight is not against humans, but it's against the spirits that are in humans. So when you listen to what a person say, they are letting you know who you fight. In other words, if I were you, I wouldn't try to go back to school. Girl, you too old. The spirit behind that is, is a spirit of jealousy. It don't want you to leave them. Well, they just how they are. No, that's a spirit that they, they're trying to sabotage you. They don't want you to go higher in life. See, God said you got to start speaking and you got to start asking the Lord to reveal people in your life who are storms. And you got to say, God, give me the grace to deal with these storms. 